Hello. Uh, the maneuvers that I will be discussing today is steep turns. The purpose of steep turns is to develop the smoothness, orientation, coordination, and the division of attention necessary when performing maximum performance turns when the aircraft is near its performance limits. What steep turns consist of is two 360 degree turns. So one to the left and then one to the right at 45 degrees of bank where you'll have to roll out back on your entry heading. So for the purpose of the day, our entry heading is 360 degrees and this is a bird's eye view of the maneuver. And also for the purpose of the day, we will be performing this for private standards, for private pilot applicants. So, for private students, you need to perform this turn at 45 degrees of bank, where you will be allowed plus or minus five, uh, five degrees. Also for this turn, you need to maintain your entry altitude of plus or minus 100 feet. You also need to maintain your entry airspeed of plus or minus 10 knots. You also need to maintain your or roll out on your entry heading of plus or minus 10 knots of your entry heading or 10 degrees of your entry heading. And you cannot, you, the minimum altitude for this maneuver that you can begin is at least, is greater than 1,500 AGO. So for the purpose of today, we will pretend as if we are performing this maneuver at 3,000 feet. So to set up for the maneuver, you will first have to do your pre-maneuver checklist, make sure that the aircraft is in the clean configuration, uh, cruise power is so about 2,400 RPMs, and you also have to do your clearing turns, uh, left and right 90 degrees, and looking for traffic, terrain, or any towers in the area, make sure the area is clear and safe to perform the maneuver. So when you're in the maneuver, also you will have to uh, look for a suitable field to land in in case the engine fails, and pick a reference point directly in front of you that you will use and back it up with your headings so that you know what altitude to roll out on uh, upon completing the maneuver. So uh, as I said, we'll be pretending as if we are flying directly north on a 360 heading. And when you begin the turn, you tur the first turn is to the left. So when you begin the turn, roll in 45 degrees of bank and add back pressure and keep that turn coming around. You want to divide your attention inside and outside the airplane and keep that sight picture of what it, th what it looks like when the horizon intersects the nose of the airplane coming around in the turns. You want to look inside and outside. Glance at your instruments, glance back outside. You don't want to stare inside or outside too long. Uh, you want to divide your attention in and out when you're in the turn. So you keep that turn coming around and you add back pressure. It could help to add some trim in the turn to keep that back pressure and maintain your altitude and possibly add uh, 100 RPMs or 200 maybe, depending on what you need in the turn to maintain that altitude. Because if you do not add that back pressure, uh, you will begin to sink and you might bust the maneuver or bust your altitude. So you want to keep that turn coming in, turn coming around on the, right, on the left, and then after you roll back out on your entry heading, you want to roll into the right, 45 degrees of bank. You will need to add a little bit more right rudder than you will need in your left turn because of the left turning tendency within the turn. So you want to keep that turn coming around, add that right rudder, divide your attention in and outside the airplane and keep it coming around nice and smooth all the way. Roll back out on your entry heading. When you're approaching your entry heading, you want to roll out about 20 to 25 degrees before your entry heading so that you do not bust your heading. You're allowed plus or minus 10 knots 
You do not want to bust that, or else you'll fail the maneuver. Keep in mind when you're in the turn, uh, there's an overbanking tendency. Uh, the outside wing produces more lift and will cause the airplane to overbank. So you want to add some opposite aileron bank back towards where you're banking from so that you do not bank too much. You're allowed plus or minus five knots of bank within the maneuver. So you want to be mindful of the overbanking tendency as well in the, uh, in the turn. All right, so some common errors with this maneuver. Uh, first is the failure to clear the area. So make sure that you do your pre-maneuver checklist and your clearing turns, make sure the area is safe before the maneuver. Uh, the next two go hand in hand, excessive back pressure and not adding enough back pressure. So, okay. So ex excessive pitch changes, so if you uh, pitch up or pitch down too abruptly, you will gain or lose altitude very quick and you may bust the maneuver. So you want to smoothly add in the pressure. That is the main purpose of the, of the maneuver is to be able to smoothly add in the co and controls as you need to. And if you do not add enough back pressure, uh, the nose will fall. And that is a very common uh, reason as to why students do not do it properly. Uh, the in the turn, the vertical component of lift decreases and the horizontal component of lift increases within the turn and it will cause the nose of the airplane to dip down once you start adding in that bank. So you want to make sure that you add some of that back pressure in to uh, counteract that and keep the airplane on the altitude at which you chose. Another common mistake is failure to recover on the entry heading. Uh, you want to be mindful of where you are in the turn. So like I said, you want to look inside and outside and make sure that you know where you are within the turn. You can see your reference point and roll out on your heading. So about 20 to 25 degrees before your entry heading, you want to roll out. Uh, but like I just mentioned, another common error though is fixating on your instruments. You do not want to stare at your instruments. Like I said, look inside, look outside. Uh, but yeah, look inside, look outside, and make sure that you're not staring at your instruments. You want to keep that sight picture of where the horizon meets the nose the same coming throughout the turn. If the, the horizon starts to rise and the nose starts to sink, you want to add more back pressure. And if the horizon starts to sink and the nose starts to rise, you want to push forward a little bit to counteract that and maintain that entry heading as best as possible, plus or minus 100 feet. And the last one is poor coordination. Uh, like I said, in the left turn, you will not need as much right rudder, but in the right turn, you will need more right rudder because the airplane will want to turn while you're in the turn. You want to turn to the left, so you want to counteract that turn within your steep turn.